Hello all, my name is Krish Nayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, uh, there is some something going wrong with my camera. So uh, I just made some another setup so that I wanted to upload a video because from past three days, I did not upload a video. Uh, this video that I am going to probably upload is super important for everyone out there who are looking to crack data science interviews or generative AI for generative AI roles. Because recently I had a discussion with one of my students who have recently cleared the interview and he has been hired as a generative AI engineer and he was somewhere around six months of experience that also only with internship. So I will talk about what all important questions were specifically asked with respect to the interview because many people still have that confusion. Krish, if we are applying for the generative AI role, what kind of questions we can expect from the interviewers, whether data science will be covered, whether machine learning, deep learning will be covered. So uh, uh, the student uh, who has actually cleared had a detailed interview rounds. Uh, they were around three to four rounds and I will be covering what all things were specifically asked. And just to give you a brief idea about it, like if you also preparing, you should definitely prepare in this manner so that it will be beneficial for their interview. So let me quickly go ahead and share my screen over here in front of you. So uh, generative AI interview I've written, I've, I've listed down some of the important topics, the main main models topics that was specifically asked in the interview itself. Okay. So initially uh, there was a round with respect to Python. And uh, the kind of questions that were asked with respect to the Python were from basic to intermediate, not also advanced. Basic to intermediate were sufficient over here with respect to Python. Now, uh, there was a use case that was given to the student, to the candidate basically. And uh, uh, he was also given two days time to complete the task with the help of Python. So he was able to complete it because the task was pretty much easier. Uh, what kind of task was actually given? Uh, uh, he was not allowed to disclose that. So, uh, but he just said that he was given a task uh, for which he was given two days time and he actually give the task to them. Okay. Now going forward, uh, as he went, probably, you know, the next round that he had was with respect to interview. Now, overall, uh, the kind of topics that were covered were like statistics, machine learning, okay, uh, deep learning, and open source LLMs. Okay. And I will probably deep dive into each and everything that was basically asked. Right. And there were also questions with respect to paid LLMs and databases. Okay. Now you will be seeing over here, the majority of the portions. And since this was a role for generative AI engineer, and this was with respect to LLM models. Okay not LIM models, it was with respect to large language models, so that the kind of task that you will be able to solve is with respect to NLP, that is natural language processing. That basically means the business use cases that you are solving, this will be something related to text, okay? And that is the reason we say it as natural language processing. Now with respect to Python, as I already said, basic to intermediate was there. Uh, over here, and then when we go, the person actually started, the interviewer started to ask questions with respect to statistics. Now in statistics, there are two main parts, you know, one is the descriptive statistics and one is the inferential statistics. Uh, with respect to the candidate, the recruiter specifically focused on inferential statistics. Now, when we talk about inferential statistics, that is something related to hypothesis testing. And then in hypothesis testing, various tests, let's say I've given some example like Z test, T test, chi-square test, right? Chi-square test. Uh, there was a test with respect to ANOVA test, right? So I'm listing down all the tests that are available in the hypothesis testing, but the person specifically got asked question with respect to chi-square and ANOVA, okay? And the main outcome of this part of this module was to understand how this tests are used in real world scenarios, okay? real world scenarios. So this was the main thing over there, right? The reason why I'm writing all the other tests because you need to prepare in this specific way itself. Anyhow, what I will do is that all the playlist link I will be giving in the description of this particular video, which you can go and refer because everything that I think that I've actually uploaded in my YouTube channel, you don't even have to go anywhere. You know, you just have to refer them all the materials, all the questions, how it is related to a real world scenario, everything is given. So with the help of this preparation, I think you will be able to clear it very, very much easily because this is the feedback that I got from the person who has already cleared it. Okay. Now 
since as i said the majority of the task was with respect to llm models in machine learning much algorithm point of things was not asked but something task related to nlp like one of the questions were asked with respect to text embedding okay text embeddings now text embeddings there are different different techniques like tfidf bag of words you know but the person when he was taking the interview they specifically asked about word to vec and the question was asked like how word to vec is trained from scratch okay how how it is basically trained right so this was the question that was asked over here and again when i talk about word to vec i'm just including it in machine learning but the way that how word to vec models are basically trained they are specifically comes in deep learning part also right because over here also use use an artificial neural network to train this particular word to vec models okay so the question was asked deep dived in word to vec and uh, uh, there was also some examples where they had asked about the implementation part also okay like how the data set will be that if you want to train a word to vec model from scratch how do you think you are going to prepare your data set what will be the input values what will be the output values what should be the vector size you know all this kind of questions were specifically asked you know and uh, there were also some of the mathematical concepts that were asked right like what is cosine similarity so these all are some thing very important you should know it so right so similarity what is cosine similarity what is similarity score so everything was basically covered right some amount of mathematical questions along with machine learning algorithm uh, and machine learning uh, questions with respect to nlp use cases okay uh, and he also was uh, he also said that they had asked some of the question with respect to simple linear regression to understand as basics okay simple linear regression okay so at least this algorithm i think you should be really really good at now with respect to deep learning nlp over here two important questions were asked but at the end of the day what all important questions do you think over here are like activation functions right activation function loss functions then you specifically have optimizers optimizers are very important okay and uh, if i probably talk with respect to the interview this was the main question that was asked and with respect to all the neural network like ann cnn and all if i consider there was one neural network that was basically asked that is basically transformer and bert okay and bert so this two like 30 percentage of the entire interview were focused on this transformers and bert you know and how is the architecture what is encoder decoder what is attention what is self attention how can you implement it from the scratch how can you use hugging face and implement this everything was asked in this so the majority of the time right 30 percentage of the entire interview time was spent on this transformer and bert and already again as i said in my youtube channel i have already uploaded the video all you have to do is that go ahead and refer it completely in detail it is a 2 hour session step by step how things work everything has been explained in that particular video okay so it is up to you please go ahead and check it out okay now the reason what i feel is that transform is asked because right now with respect to all the models that you see all the large language models you know the base is transformers right so transformers really becomes a very important topic when i say transformer there are multiple topics that comes in mind okay so let me write down all those topics right one is attention is all you need attention is all you need our super important research paper and this interview that was happened just a week back okay and uh, just a week back also i had uploaded a video a research video uh, a research paper had come something related to one bit llm right and just imagine this question was also asked in the interview okay so because the 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 candidate was very much curious to talk about this you know so uh, trust me this is the best feeling that i get you know whenever i try to upload a video and suddenly it is asked in the interview that gives me the best ever feeling now with respect to deep learning nlp as i said attention is all you need what is encoder decoder activation function loss function two important question as i said optimizers were asked to him and transformer and bert was asked right then they started focusing on open source llms right they started talking about llama 2 right google gamma model right google gamma model so how this 
how these models are specifically trained. So if I probably consider with respect to Llama 2, how this model is trained. Again, I've explained in depth in my video. That is the best feeling I get, guys. Okay. And the major question is that when should you probably go ahead with open source or paid, right? So I have also created this video also, right? It completely depends on the use case, data security, many more things, right? Now with respect to paid LLMs, uh, again, the majority of the question was asked in open AI, you know, and uh, the other models that are there like cloudy, cloudy three has recently come, right? And if I probably talk about this architecture that is serverless, serverless from Amazon bedrock, right? So Amazon bedrock, what it has done, it has given you a serverless APIs to access all this kind of LLM models, different, different LLM models. Uh, you have a lot of different different LLM models even from Amazon you have models like Titan you have Llama 2 open source model different different models itself how you can actually use serverless Amazon bedrock because the cost is also very very much less you don't even have to worry about the infrastructure and all and with respect to this when they were asking with respect to the paid LLM models the major thing that they focused on was on frameworks how you can with which frameworks you can specifically work like Langchain right uh, lang chain then you have llama llama index right llama index how, how you can work with this what are the functionalities between lang chain versus what is the differences between lang chain versus llama index there is also one another framework which is called a chainlet right so all this kind of frameworks are specifically asked what are additional functionalities you have in this frameworks you know if i talk about databases then there were questions asked with respect to vector database right there were questions asked with respect to MySQL and a NoSQL database. I'd again suggest that please prepare for this three kind of databases because vector database is a NoSQL database itself. A MySQL database, a NoSQL database. How a vector database is specifically used in, in creating a lot of different, different applications. When these all questions were specifically asked, trust me, when I say I have written overall the topics that were focused on, but all these questions that were asked were based on the projects, right? Any projects that you implement with respect to Gen AI. And I tell you guys right now, whatever projects that you create just by your own, understand those projects are also super important because right now Gen AI is still developing. People are developing more amazing things. Probably in upcoming two to three years, you know, there'll be many things that will be coming up. When we talk about projects generative AI, I've seen, I've also uploaded videos with respect to LLM ops. Okay, LLM ops, if you probably see my playlist over here, right, in my in my channel itself, right. Now, this project, while they were explaining this, uh, the candidate was explaining, he covered almost each and everything over here, right. Initially, from here to, uh, if I talk about this deep learning part, you know, normal questions were asked. And then when the person, when the interviewer went for the project part, he started explaining about all these paid LLM models that were used, the frameworks that were used, the databases that were used, why we did not go ahead with this database, what are the deployment mechanisms that were specifically asked. Now in Langchain, there were simple, amazing questions that were asked with respect to LangServe, right? There were questions asked with respect to LangSmith, because these are some new features that are coming with respect to deployment and creating APIs, a simple and easy way, right? And he was also able to talk about this. So if I talk about the entire interview, you can probably see that still, if I say 20% of the interview, they have still focused on, if I probably talk about 20% of the interview, they've still focused on basic concepts, right? And then if I talk about deep learning, 30% was actually covered, right? Deep learning part, specifically transformers and all if i talk about project part right another 30 percentage was covered so 30 20 30 is somewhere around 80 percent remaining 20 percent will be on some or the other things right so this way the entire interview had actually gone right so you also need to prepare in this specific way the best part is that i've created all this kind of playlist now right now in linkedin also if you go ahead and see every day i'm trying to post a transition story i have a lot of transition story still i have not posted it out it is up to you go ahead and probably check it out that will definitely give you the motivation so i hope you like this particular video this was it for my side i'll see you in the next video have a great day thank you and all take care bye bye